one player or one player won the Mac Trophy of the Year, one player won the Herman Trophy of the Year. Those trophies combined, but those are the co-national players of the year in the same year, 1992. Indiana in their home whites, or I guess I should say road whites, wearing them at home here today. Here's Carson Handerlong on an early run on the far side of the field. He scored two goals in his last three games since he's moved into the starting lineup. Keep in mind, Indiana scored early this week, too, against Evansville, a goal in the fifth minute. So they're a team that has been frustrated with not being able to finish their chances, so they are playing with a little extra motivation, trying to get the ball in the back of the net. It's been working the past few games. They got that huge win over Penn State a couple games ago. They didn't look like they had any problems against Evansville this yeah, week. 2-0 yeah. over the Aces. The defense has not been a problem by any means for this Indiana team. They've given up one goal at home this season. Teams have not come to Jerry Egley Field and been able to do much in the attack in third. But. Max Trejo, the man in goal for the Buckeyes. Hugo Bacharach has been moved to the midfield, a transfer from Fairleigh Dickinson to Bloomington. Sarver goes down with Braden Durbin, who got a little footsie. They're gonna, moving a bit too quickly. I'm going to call that one back. I'm interested to see what's going on with Trey Hill. This was a, coming into this year for Ohio State. It wasn't a clear, you know, decision on who was going to be starting keeper. It was not Trey Hill to start the year. He ended up earning that spot a little later in the season. He started most of the games, 9 of the 12, and he's done pretty well. Uh, save percentage just under 70%. He has three total shutouts on the year. I credit that a lot to Ohio State's very impressive back line. It's Miller. On that back line for Indiana, trying to boot it forward. Ohio State and Luciana Pakota with a throw in now. Back to Brian Masonov, who's in his sixth season with the Buckeyes. A losing record, Ben, 31 48 and 15, but made the NCAA tournament for the first time last year and got a win over Wake Forest 3 0. Ended up losing to UNC Greensboro. The way those two brackets worked out, there could have been a chance if Ohio State got the win over UNC Greensboro, got one more win. You could see the Hoosiers and the Buckeyes could have seen them in the tournament. That would have been an interesting matchup. But it just shows how good both of these teams have been and how that comes from the tree of everything that started in Indiana, Jerry Yegley, and, and how successful this Indiana soccer program has been. Indiana has dominated the series over Ohio State. Although the Buckeyes did win last September in Columbus 2-1 over the Hoosiers. But overall, Indiana's won 48 of the 57 matchups. Yeah, somewhat of a revenge game, especially on this one, because before going into that game, Indiana had won eight straight against the Buckeyes. That's a frustrating one from last year. Miller trying to get away from Michael Adedekun, and JT Harms clears it. It's fall break here in Bloomington for students, so as expected, and for quite a chilly matchup yeah, here in mid-October. Um, not much students in attendance across our way. The ones that show out are always very energetic, though. Crab band, of course, always proving to be strong. Todd Yegley always talks about the best fans in the country. Had a record-selling crowd earlier this season. That was one of the first few matches of the year. It was against Washington. Yeah, that loss to the Huskies. And keep in mind, that was somewhat of a showcase that Ohio State was also in. Now, Indiana and Ohio State didn't play each other because they were going to play each other later in conference, but they bo both teams played Seton Hall. Both teams played Washington. And Ohio State ended up drawing against the Huskies. A better result than the Hoosiers had. Yeah, but then you look the other way, and Indiana had a better result against Seton Hall where they won that match, Ohio State lost to the Pirates. So the transitive property doesn't always work in the whole college soccer scheme. A lot of parity. Sam weighs across in, Harms gets it in his gut. The Sarver, an opportunity on the fast break. Working towards his right, a shot deflected. It'll be a corner for Indiana, but aggressive offensive playmaking from Sam Sarver, the sophomore. It's good defense from Ohio State right there. There was not a lot of help. I believe that was Sean Ryan in the back line. Just able to get his left foot on it. Sam Sarver came into the year a Big Ten player to watch, and just last week was the offensive player of the week in the conference. He leads Indiana in goals with five. 
Leads in goals, leads in assists, too. He's, sell he's not selfish at all. He likes to share the ball. He did a lot early on, too. Through all three of his goals came pretty early in the season. Freshman Alex Barger on the reset. His left foot too far. Back a rack will corral it. Good defense again by Ryan and Magnuson. Boots it forward to Adetoku. Ohio State second in the Big Ten in shots. They have 181 coming into this game. That's actually behind Indiana, mm -hmm. who's getting up near 190. These are two teams that have just struggled with finishing on the season. Not only finishing shots, it's finishing a lot of ways. And Mason, I've kind of said this to earlier, finishing is just a word, not only finishing shots and opportunities, but also finishing matches. You see the five draws for Ohio State. Indiana has four. That's Hugo Bacharach down holding that right shoulder. And they're going to call for the training staff of Indiana to come out, slow to get up. It looked like fighting for the ball on that touch line. Inside the box and then cleared by Ohio State. A big collision, no whistle. Adeto Kuhn dashing forward and a good play by Jansen Miller. The Xavier transfer to get it into the midfield. You know, Ohio State's kind of making it clear what they want to do. They're going to try to use the speed of Adeta Kuhn to get the ball up, and they're going to try to take him one-on-one, -on -one, test Indiana's back line at least early to see if they can break. It's a windy and cloudy day in Bloomington. Patrick McDonald, a chance on the far side now. Andre Roberts in defensive position. Henderlong a touch too high and a high kick. Magnuson is over there. Hugo Bacharach is back in the game. They may have called that a handball. Yeah, Todd Yagley talked about Indiana's got to be better ball from ball inside ball. the box, extended. He said the first ball into the box is always poor, and, and they can't seem to get any, they can't seem to get the right weight on a lot of the passes. Well, the guy for Ohio State, Ben, I haven't said his name yet, Lawrence Wooten, the senior from England, a 2023 Ehrman Watchlist member, was labeled by Top Tour Soccer as the number two player in the country. Mm -hmm was the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year last season. Yeah, he does a lot of different things. And you see the offensive numbers as Indiana. Pushing Good play all the way by up. Henderlong on yeah. Trejo, making him uncomfortable. But back to Wooten, he does a lot of different things than just score. You know, he can play in the midfield too. He can defend a little bit. He's got so much speed, and that's what this Ohio State team really uses. And he's a leading scorer for Ohio State. We talked to Masonov. We asked him, you know, someone, give us somebody that doesn't show up on the shit stat sheet that you think has really impressed you so far. He said, if you take out the numbers of Lawrence Wooten, he would still be someone that impresses him because of the things that don't show up on the stat sheet, the hustle that he has, the defense that he plays. So he's just really an all-around guy. He's been the star for Ohio State so far. One of the best players in the conference. Ohio State needs him today on the road. Borkovic, a chance, and it's booted away by Joey Mayer. Indiana's back line a little bit frantic, and like you said, Ohio State moving pretty quickly. Was a, Mayer was in an awkward position there. He, I don't think he knew how far back he was, so he kind of had to turn around and, and take a couple steps, but Ohio State's definitely making this back line uncomfortable. That's something that doesn't happen a whole lot. Yeah, Sam Ways, going to work on Oduro there. It's going to be three straight throw-ins for the Buckeyes. There's Lawrence Wooten across in, gets headed out by Mayer. There's another throw in, too. Indiana finally able to get in the right position, but I see a couple good moves. Odetto Kuna shot just left of the post. Harms was there anyways. Yeah, Odetto Kuna's been aggressive, and not only has he been aggressive, they've been aggressive getting him the ball. He's used to cross over here, saw a little bit of a hole. And, you know, part of that is, you know, maybe he finds a sliver on the goal that he thinks he could find, but also there was no one really around him that was, was open for something quick. So just wanted to get it off, maybe catch Indiana off guard. Not a terrible decision, I think. Just off the mark. Yep. JT Harms in his second season as the starting keeper for Indiana. 
has been really solid for the Hoosiers, has only allowed seven goals. Yeah, he dealt with a little bit of an injury last season and also playing time that, that wasn't really consistent through the first few games last year with Bryant Pratt also being there. So he got so, off to somewhat of a start that Trejo's off to this year, just not unsure about a lot of things. Finally has a year. He knows he's going to be the starting full-time keeper and be a captain, and he's really done well with it. It was actually an injury to Bryant Pratt. They were splitting time initially yep. to start the season. An injury in the St. John's game early last September that gave JT Harms that starting role, and he really exploded. He was excellent in the NCAA tournament run to the College Cup Final. Well, that was the name of the game, was defense for Indiana in that tournament run. Didn't give up a goal until that College Cup Final against Syracuse. Yeah, Joey Mayer has been a foundation of that defensive unit for Indiana and that back line. No Daniel Mooney this season. He graduated and moved on to the MLS. You get Brett Beebe back, too. So that's going to be huge. And yeah, Jansen Miller, a guy who has stepped up yep. this fall. Miller, not a guy who got a ton of playing time, but you get to learn from guys like that and practice and everything like that. So that, that, that definitely helps. McDonald up ahead to Tommy Mahalik. Henderlong moves into the box. Here's the freshman Barger. Pollock trying to find a crease. A little give and go action. Sarver missed the mark. Adendokun the other way. Goes down, whistle blown by referee Beeler. It'll be a free kick for Ohio State. I really liked what Adendokun has done. It's his first year at yeah. Ohio State transfer over from Dayton. He was part of the all A-10 tournament team because he has that potential to just break out for a couple goals in, in a single game. That's what he did in the A-10 tournament a season ago. Andre Roberts. There's Adeta Kuhn. Miller, the defender. Inside the box, a chance right here, and just at the gloves of JT Harms. It was Pakoda who had a great opportunity. When you're a goalie, you've got to be aggressive, and JT Harms was just aggressive enough to come up and get that ball. Also, the position battle is kind of what helped Harms get time to eventually grab it and haul it in. But that's what Harms has approved at most, in my opinion. Last year, I felt like there were a lot of times he was either not aggressive enough and, and sometimes come off his line too early. That's always a hard thing to judge as a goalie, especially when you're not getting consistent playing time. This year, with yeah. consistent playing time, he's shown he's gotten a lot better. Yeah, that year, too, under his belt as a starter has helped in great ways. That looked like a handball, no whistle. Brett Beebe on that Big Ten logo. Baccarat goes down, free kick Hoosiers. Been a physical game so far, at the seventh foul. Well, each team has a chances, and you've seen very, very different approaches and chances. Indiana's been more patient, passing it sort of around the box, when Durbin got a little too much of back rack. Ohio State's just going at it. They're finding Adonakun and just trying to get him in one-on-one -on -one situations. There's going to be seven white shirts around that 18 for Indiana. McDonald, boys to take the kick, the junior from Greensboro. In the box and right at the mittens of Max Trejo, redshirt sophomore from Mexico City. First action Trejo's got. He's been impressive, too, this year for Ohio State. We talked about the inconsistent playing time, but it's been better as of late in terms of the defensive numbers, and a lot of that is thanks to your goal. Adeto Kuhn all alone. Game hasn't been played much in the midfield so no. far, Ben. It's been in both attacking thirds. They've both been aggressive. I mean, they both had their chances. And... For how defensive both of these teams are, it's been somewhat of a surprise, but they both get shots. BB. One gets cleared. Good here, Brian. Mason of yelling for his team to push the ball forward. 
yeah, after that rebound, and in specifically, Sean Ryan, the redshirt senior defender. Amanda mentioned how Masonov told us that he's kind of trying to play. They're trying to go into this as like Indiana's kind of a faceless team, but there's actually actually an extra motivation to kind of beat an Indiana team like that yeah. when you you have that connection with the Eagley. And uh, that win last year was huge for Masonov in the Ohio State program. Ended up making the tournament. Yeah, Masonov, a member of the 1998 United States World Cup team. Coached with Todd Yeagley at Indiana, the former associate head coach. Sam Sarver a chance, but a great defensive play by Trejo. I know that. I think Indiana went too early. Yeah. They tried to do kind of what Ohio State's been doing with the Denikun and just trying to serve it up and have him go downfield, stay on for just the right amount of time. But even if even with even if that stood, Trejo did a really good job coming off his line. That's what we were talking about that Harms has been better at. Borkovich. Looking for Pakoda. Now he finds Anthony Samways. Wooten. Borkovich. And Bakarak gets a good foot on it. Indiana fast break. Mahalik to Sam Sarver. Not offsides. One on one with Trejo, the goalie. Tries to go backwards, and it's going to be a penalty. That might have been all Ohio State could have done in that situation. Maybe not worst case scenario for the Buckeyes. Sarver has so much speed. No matter where he is on the field, it's going to be a threat. A lot of times he likes to play outside. This time it was more up the middle. Ooh. Magnuson, number I don't 30, know if I saw a lot of contact, contact on that. And then, and then they're going to, there's going to be a review there. We'll take a look at that again. I don't think I saw contact. Yeah, so Alex Beeler, lead Sarver referee, may have just slipped. Going over to the booth to take a peek at this. It's definitely in the box, so that's out of question. That wasn't really close. Oh, the great ball from Tommy Mahalik up ahead to Sam Sarver, and this a very critical. And you look at what can be reviewed, and obviously this is not is the goal scored a situation. But it, quite it sure. definitely, if it is a foul, if they had a call foul, it was definitely on Magnuson, and it would definitely be in the, be in the, the box. So I don't know. I think you know, Sarver trying to change directions. You know, a little bit. The conditions here are not great in Bloomington. Um, it hasn't been rainy, but it, it's it's one of those days where it's not really rainy, rainy, but it's wet just because how much wind there is and and. Missed. There was some fog earlier today. And that was a quick review, it looks like. Yeah, so both coaches getting an explanation now. And that's just Sam Sarver being aggressive. He's a guy who just flies over the field, him and Aduro. Yep, so decision officially stands. Nothing. Changed about that. So it will be a penalty kick for Indiana. Sarver creating an opportunity for his team. Scoring opportunity early. Just over 15 minutes into this match, and Indiana a chance to draw first blood. It's Joey Mayer lined up to take the penalty. For your Hoosiers will be number two. Joey, Mayor. Mayor. No goals on the season. And he has got a few different guys who could take these penalty kicks, but I haven't been in situations, a lot of situations like this. You have to watch, of course, for the rebound. Mayor, an all Big Ten defender. Goes left and Indiana scores. 
Huge moment for Joey Mayer because that's his first of the season, but Sam Sarver sets that up. He leads the team in points and goals and in assists. And those two are gonna, gonna hug it out. Thank you, thank one another for being able to finish those opportunities. But Sam Sarver's been so impressive this year. No matter where they put him, they tried to put him in, a, in kind of a striker role a couple games earlier this year. Now he's playing a little more on the outside up front. Nothing much Max Trejo could do, just guess the wrong way. Mayer did have a couple goals a season ago. But for this season. Mayer, a guy who started all 22 games last year. Deserving of that. Yep. Another family guy in this in this Indiana soccer program, brother Jack in the MLS right now, played for the Hoosiers earlier in his career. But it was the aggressive play, Ben, of Tommy Mahalik and Sam Sarver that resulted in the chance for Indiana. Siggy Magnuson, the foul in the box for the penalty. 1-0 Indiana on top. Nagley has been talking about all week how he thinks the biggest problem has been the weight of the passes, why they can't finish opportunities. Well, Tommy Mahalik had it perfectly there to get it to Sarver. Mahalik, a guy who is all Big Ten as a freshman. He started 20 games last year, but this year he really hasn't seen that, seen that same spark in terms of putting the ball in the net. Well, he's taken a somewhat of a different role for this Indiana team because they do have different options scoring-wise, and I think that's a big problem that Indiana has changed up so much because they haven't known what to do with Tommy Mahalik because he is a threat to score from a lot of areas. But he's taken back to the midfield a little bit and asked for more of a defensive role. Well, that's the kind of guy he is. Nonetheless, he's going to whatever the role is. Todd Yegley will tell him. He'll say okay with a smile on his face. And he just wants to win for this Indiana team. Indiana, a team that started slow last fall as well. They ended up finding themselves in a position with a national seed and eventually in the College Cup final and lost in penalties, handball called. Well, that's going to be what's interesting to see is how much does the RPI is going to matter for this year's tournament draw last the year? Big Ten has kind of seen a, a not, dip yeah. besides Northwestern and Penn State. At the top, Michigan State's been solid as well. But Maryland, not what people expected them to be. Rutgers was really strong last year, a team that knocked Indiana out of the Big Ten tournament. Indiana 53 this season, Ohio State 83, the respective RPI ranks right now. Neither of those, you'd think, as of now, would be good enough to get into a postseason. Yeah, Indiana's regular season finale just at the end of this month, so they're a few weeks away from wrapping up conference play and heading to the postseason. Good thing for Indiana, though, is they have some of their winnable games on the back half of the schedule, like this one right here that's a big starter, and then you get Maryland and Rutgers later. Pakoda fighting with Miller. And Miller does a good job boxing him out. And Miller's big, and he's so aggressive. And you saw him getting position right there. That's what makes him so good is his ability to com combine the speed and power. But JT Harm is really the leader of the defensive side for Indiana. 3-2-3 three, and three record so far. Uh, all barely over half goals against his average per game and a save percentage over 80%. Unheard of in, in a, at a Big Ten level like that. Yeah, 30 saves, four harms, and you have to think of just how lucky a guy like Todd Yeagley feels. Uh, obviously, goes for recruiting out of the transfer portal. Harms was a transfer from Duke, came over last season. Well, keep in mind, there were people that thought last year what was missing from this Indiana team was that goalie. JT Harms had struggled in the well, middle Roman, of the season. You have to think bit. about who he was trying to replace, and Roman Celentano, a top two pick in the MLS draft the year prior. Exactly, but Harm stepped it up in late season, stepped it up in the NCAA tournament, got him to the NCAA tournament finals, and has been playing great this year. No question, Indiana has the talent to make it back to the College Cup, just as they've done 22 times. But that quest for nine has been ongoing and a lot of disappointing losses in the later stages of the NCAA tournament in recent years. That just shows the kind of program you are to have those, those standards and expectations like that, though. 
Oduro, the freshman. A good move, <laughs> trying to maneuver through three Buckeye defenders. That was a bad pass. Bakarak, a chance moving to his left. A shot just left of the post. Bakarak can do what he was doing with that one. He had a spot in mind. He just uses the left, and, and that was a, a lot like we saw from Dedekum earlier in the game. Just couldn't bend it enough. Trejo had a good shot at it anyways, but like you said, couldn't get it to bend in that upper left corner. But Indiana's actually asking him to take more of a scoring role and an attacking role than he is used to. He's pretty much fully a back line guy at Fairleigh Dickinson before arriving here. You would think with his height as well, I mentioned this earlier, just his ability on those resets. Indiana has not scored off oh. a reset this season in an area they were so potent at last fall. I talked about it. You have so much height, not just in Bacharach, but different guys too. You'd, you'd think they are, but weight of the pass is a big thing Higley's been preaching, and a lot of that's weight of the ball served in. Ohio State has slowed things down since that penalty goal from Joey Mayer. They were really aggressive early on, and that. It's kind of how Indiana had that penalty opportunity off the fast break. Good things happen when you're aggressive, and there's a lot of different options. There's a mistake there from Bacharach, I think. Dedokun. Blocked by Oduro, but the ricochet at the feet of Samways. Lawrence Wooten, number eight, to Adetokun. Pakoda had an open lane and gets it knocked away from him by Patrick McDonald. First of this Big Ten Plus Soccer double header we have here at Indiana. Women's soccer coming up at 3 o'clock. First kick with uh, Indiana and Michigan. A lot of Hoosiers versus Wolverines playing this weekend. Michigan football yesterday, volleyball last night, and the women's soccer will play later today. One and one so far, so that women's soccer will, will determine who gets the uh, Hoosier Wolverine <laughs> trophy of midway through October. Yeah, Hoosier didn't fare too well in Ann Arbor yesterday on the uh, American football side of things. First sub of the match, Maloon Gumbali, number 14 for the Hoosiers, in for Carson Henderlong. Gumbali, the grad student senior. Gumbali, you know, another guy who I think expected a little more playing time this season based on what he had last year. He plays up front, but hasn't scored a lot in the last couple of years, and that's been the frustration for him. He's talked about it. So Duro on the right wing. Oduro, the freshman from Ghana, has really been potent this season on the wing for Todd Yeagley and Indiana just starting to find their footing midway through the season. Big part of that, they're communicating better. Amanda for a hit on that. Oh, thanks, William. And yeah, despite being up one nothing, there's still a lot of noise coming from that Indiana bench, specifically Todd Yeagley. He's yelling at pretty much everybody on the field to just communicate better, get in touch with each other, figure out where they are on the field. No doubt they want to get another goal up on the board in this first half, but the Hoosiers are not planning to let up anytime soon, guys. Yeah, thank you, Amanda. Good stuff down there. Todd Yeagley very vocal on the sideline for the Hoosiers. Here's Andre Roberts for the Buckeyes. Adeto Kuhn, back foot. Dakota, left foot, and over the net. I'll tell you, Ohio State's had a lot of chances, and a big reason why is because of the passing of a Dedekun. There's been a couple of plays, and this one specifically, where he's had a pass to someone he wasn't looking at, a little soft touch to get off to somebody, and he set up Pakoda there, just couldn't finish it. And you see Harms telling a couple guys on his back line, they need to get back. But Ohio State putting a lot of pressure on. Second shot of the day for the Buckeyes. 
Keep in mind, Ohio State's coming into this game with a lot of attacking momentum, too. They were down 2 nothing against Louisville in their last match, but scored two goals in the last 10 minutes of the game to end up tying the cards and try to bring a lot of that momentum into this one. Yeah, a team that knows how to fight from behind. State, Ohio State came into the season with expectations of making two straight NCAA tournaments at this rate. Well, it's almost a carbon copy. Dedekun fighting with Miller. Miller wins the battle. Almost carbon copy of what was expected. Oh, a lot of contact there. Elliot foul. Yeah, Gumbali thrown to the ground by Sean Ryan. Was expected to be the, the preseason oh, coaches poll for top four in the Big Ten is the bottom four of the Big Ten right now. We're halfway through Big Ten play this season. And Ohio State, Indiana, Rutgers, Maryland in no particular order. But those were the four teams expected to be the top. And they're at the bottom now. We talked to Mason Al about it, and he said, you know, as great as those rankings are, you can usually throw those out the window with how good the Big Ten is and how many different teams can, can step up. But just teams like Northwestern and Michigan State who have really come out of nowhere. Yeah, Northwestern team that Indiana will travel to face in a few weeks. They go to Maryland next Friday. So subs from both teams here. Ashton Bilo for the Buckeyes. And for Indiana, the freshman Clay Murador. Tommy Mahalik heads to the sideline. Ben Pakota and Adetokun who have been the main factors for Ohio State. A guy like Lawrence Wooten who's throwing it in right now. We talked about earlier how good he can be. Leads the Buckeyes in goals has really been a non-factor. He's playing more in the midfield. He's asked to do more defensively than usual because of how Indi aggressive Indiana has been in the front line. And you know, Credit Sam Sarver, credit Tommy Mahalik, credit Collins Duro. Ranked number seventh nationally in goals against average. You know, we were talking about. So Dedekun gets past Miller. Three Buckeyes in the box for him, just out of the reach of Ashton Bilo. Andre Roberts. See, back Bilo just checked into the game. And uh, there's that one. Out. Oh, yeah. We were talking earlier about Masonov and, and Yegley, and we went through that little bit of a package. We showed some some old school photos. I think Indiana should go back to some of those some of those uniforms that they were showing with Yegley and Masonov. Yeah, I mean the ones they currently have are, <laughs> are definitely in that direction. I remember they changed them last year, and a lot of people not upset about it, but thought maybe it was a step down. I think these white ones are as good as it gets. They haven't worn them a ton this season, too. I think that, that's what makes the jersey a little more special. It's a clean home look. Sam Ways intercepted it, and here he is on a run. We were talking about the stretch, the rough stretch that Indiana went through last year, even though they still made the College Cup final. This game against Ohio State was kind of the centerpiece of that struggle. And it was one of the games they felt like early on they played really well and they felt like this might get them back on track but couldn't hold, conceded a couple goals at the end of the match. And it was a win for Brian Masonov and the Buckeyes that really propelled them into the NCAA tournament and helped their RPI. Early in the season that win was in Columbus, early September, one of the first Big Ten games of the season for both teams. Alex Barger just boots it out of play. Sam Sarver.
Rush Raider wanted that one forward. You know, we talk about the Big Ten standings and how much it's flipped, but you take that with a grain of salt because of how close the top team and the bottom team are in the Big Ten right now. Maryland only one point on one draw, but Northwestern in first place is only 10 points, I believe. It, it, there's really not a lot of variety, and a lot of things could happen in these next couple of weeks that could shake up the, the table, especially with, like I said, Indiana playing Ohio State, Rutgers, and Maryland, who are the, the, the three of the bottom four teams right now. Yeah, Braden Durbin out in for Ohio State is Tommaso Villa, the junior from Twinsburg, Ohio. Sam Sarver on a run, weaving through Buckeye defenders. Gets it taken away. Sam Ways has been active in recent minutes. And just off the foot of Bakota. It was pretty errant there on that forward wall, but here he is charging forward. gets it taken away. Gumbali, a forward ball from Murador, and coming out of the 18 was Max Trejo to stop that push. Maybe Trejo's gonna have to be a little bit more aggressive on those fast break opportunities. That's what led to the Indiana goal and the penalty. Well, what happens when Ohio State's so aggressive, they have so many men up, but sometimes Trejo doesn't have as much help back. Gumbali to Sarver in the box. And that's going to be a corner for Indiana. Once again, the aggressive play of Sarver. Smart play from Sarver, too. He tripped up a little bit, was a little too far out of reach of that ball, saw it was tipped, didn't try to go after it and keep it in the box. Just let it go out of bounds and let it set up a corner for your team. So Sarver with the right foot will take this corner. Seven in the box for Indiana. Cross in. It looks like Trejo got a finger on it. Murador working to Magnuson's left. A good move to get it out of the corner. And a better tackle that has eventually ruled a foul on Murador. Maybe an extra push after, right? Both players to again. slow to get up. They called that on the freshman, number 20 yeah. in white. I don't know if I saw a little extra push after the ball was was won from him, but I don't, I don't think that was enough to draw a foul. So Mirador with a limp on that right foot. Freshman was a track star, also played football in high school, three-sport athlete. He's down. He, he's having a tough time walking this one off. Try to get up and walk a little bit, but this is lingering a little bit with him. So this is a second injury stoppage we've had in this ongoing first half. But a younger guy who's got a lot of time to learn. So after the stoppage, about 34 minutes in to the first half, it's still 1-0 Indiana. Wooten chests that one out in front of Indiana's bench. Over Wooten. Well, Sam Ways forward to Adetta Kuhn Miller. We've seen a few battles between Wooten and Sarver, and that's kind of what we were looking for in this game two stars in the team. And it really looks like Sarver's been winning a lot of them. He mentioned it earlier, Wooten's been somewhat quiet, but he tends to strike late. Scored in the 85th minute to tie that game against Louisville on just a week ago. 
You're right about him playing more in the midfield. He's having to defend more. Andre Roberts with those neon green cleats. The first 15 minutes or so, Ben, this was a game that was mainly played in the attacking third since the goal. It's really slowed down, been played in the midfield like these past few minutes. Amanda does have more on Lawrence Mooton. What you got for us, Amanda? Oh, thanks, William. And you've talked about Wooten a little bit. He hasn't been too much of a factor as obviously Ohio State doesn't have a goal. But Maysnock did say that even if he didn't have the stats he does, he leads the team in goal shots and shots on goal. Wooten would still be a big part of this team because of how he leads. Maysnock said he's the full package and he just has a good way about him that makes guys enjoy being around him and they trust him. They'll talk to him about whatever they can on and off the field. He's very, motiv very motivated, leads by example for the rest of this team as one of the oldest guys on the team. Uh, a great thing for the Buckeyes as a whole. Yeah, thank you, Amanda I'm Wooten, the senior from England. A big vocal piece, obviously wearing that captain's band. 12 points of that season last year, mm -hmm. too. Five of them goals. And you need a player like that. You need a leader. And Indiana has always had a guy like that to kind of step up. Last year, Daniel, they had a few. Daniel Muni was such a leader on the back line. And then you had guys, uh, especially when you look at Ryan Wittenbrink, he was such a vital piece of that Indiana attack last season. Indiana continuing to stay aggressive despite the 1-0 lead so far. That's what they want to do, a 2-0 win against Evansville. They're not a team that likes to let up after scoring. Wind's really starting to pick up too here. You can kind of see. See it in some of the players' hairs. You can see it in your and I's hair right now. Yours especially. Yeah. Is flowing. I think I, I, is that your way of telling me I need a haircut? No. No, not at all. I think I might get that checked out this week. Something everybody's got to do, right? <laughs> I don't go to one of those like fancy salons, though. You just go to a barber. Yeah. Sports clips. Interesting. I think that says a lot about you, Ben. Here's Wooten. <laughs> Roberts. Whistle blown. As Ashton Bilo sent Alex Barger to the ground. Yeah, this game has been less, there's been less contact than you would expect from two teams like this. I, I don't know exactly what, what has been the reason. You had a couple of those injuries, but some of these fouls have been fouls with not a whole lot of contact. It's been a really slow moving first half. There was Trejo trying to get his paws on it before it goes out of play behind net for a corner. At least the last few minutes, for sure, have been slower moving. And just teams not necessarily being less aggressive, but it seems like Ohio State is starting to get more defensive because they know how detrimental giving up two goals in the first half can be. Eleven combined fouls between each two teams. Here's Sarver. On the corner, a chance for a head from there. It would have been his second goal of the day, but it just goes over the crossbar. Joey Mayer comes forward in those set opportunities. Mayer had a good look at it. <laughs> Mayer's frustrated. If you, yeah, maybe if you mistimed the jump. If he could hit that on the right spot, he could go from zero goals to two goals on the season in just one game against Ohio State. Someone who deserves that too, because once again, you know, it's hard for in the sport of soccer, it's hard for a lot of defense to still show up on the stat sheet. And he's someone who has been such a big piece of this Indiana team. There's a foul on Indiana there. Yeah, Bacharach just basically yeah. fell on Tomaso Villa. And Bacharach holding that right shoulder and right arm again. 
slow to get up. This is the second time the training staff has had to go out there for him. It's that same shoulder he injured earlier in the match. That's frustrating too. Remember last time he came off, they had to bring him off, couldn't sub. Or if they wanted him to come back in, they couldn't sub, but he had to start while Indiana got the free kick on the sideline and then sprint in while Indiana got the free kick off. So we'll see what they do here, and it looks yeah. like they are going to sub. Looks like Indiana will make a substitution here with Nate Ward, the senior from Pennsylvania. Yeah, Ward, we saw a decent amount of playing time earlier in this year, really faded out. That's just kind of a natural thing that happens throughout the season is guys get less, some guys get less playing time. You start to fizzle out who gets most majority of that uh, playing time. And, but there's always opportunities like this. Somebody goes down with an injury, you got to step up. We'll see what Ward can do. So Wooten with a big leg, his free kick. Headed off by Magnuson. Once again, this time it was Mayer. We saw it with Jensen Miller earlier. Just getting position is such a big part of what this Indiana defense does. Being able to play aggressive. Just six shots combined between the two teams. One of them on goal, and that one from Indiana. And of course, the penalty. Hoosiers have had three corners to Ohio State zero. Perfectly ahead of all I saw. Gumbali on the right wing. As Sarver behind him, he crosses it in. Oduro and Ward had a chance, but didn't get a good piece of it. Yeah, Ward would have had to react quick to be able to do anything with that ball off Oduro. How about Oduro not having the height advantage, but being able to jump and get a piece of that over some of, some of the bigger defenders. Via to buy low. So Amanda's got a little bit more for us on Hugo Bacharach and the injuries for the Hoosiers. Oh, thanks, William. I'm not sure if the camera's caught it, but Hugo has gone back to the locker room with a couple of the trainers. And from my vantage point here on the sideline, I can see Murder is sitting on the bench, and it looks like he's got a, a big ice pack wrapped around his right foot and ankle area. Not exactly sure what is going on with either of them, but that's a quick update for you guys. Back up to you. Thanks, Amanda. And like she said, Ben, it's been a physical game, losing Bacharach, who heads to the locker room, and Mirador with a big ice pack, not sure of their return. It's been physical somewhat, but, a lot, but both of those injuries have kind of been somewhat fluky and just like non-contact. I mean, it, you had Mirador who tripped a little bit, and that's where he went down. But but Bacharach's is really a, kind of a reoccurring thing once it happened the second time. Right. You see how frustrated he was walking off the field holding that shoulder. And he wants to be back on the field. Well, Sean Ryan, Siggy Magnuson, and Andre Roberts, this back three for the Buckeyes have done a pretty stellar job since giving up that goal on the fast break off the penalty. Ohio State. You credit them, but I also credit, I think, in the area, Ohio State has played back a little more. They've, the defense has had a little more help from midfield. They haven't been trying to serve it up as much to Adetokun as we saw in the first few minutes because of just the possibility on those counterattacks Indiana can get and then going down 2 0 before halftime. Brett Beebe coming up to the midfield. Indiana switching to the top side. McDonald to Oduro. I haven't said Oduro's name a lot, but the freshman is quick and talented. He just boots it over the net. Yeah, Oduro's going to have a couple of those every game where he tries his hand. He has good touch on a lot of them. He has a couple of those have been on goal this season where he just tries to rip one outside of the box. But 
overall. A lot of his scoring came earlier in the season. Those two goals were the two first two games of the year. Yeah. Hasn't scored since that second second game of the year. It was the DePaul game. That the 30th shot of the season for Oduro, the freshman from Ghana, but did play his high school soccer in the United States. Good positioning from Gubali. Just couldn't keep it all. That one not out of play, still on the line. Borkovic up to Adetokun and Mayer. Palms in the air awaiting his fellow defensemen. A good chance for Ohio State. Well, I think he was shrugging because that should have been a foul. He was old. Adetokun held him back a little bit to get to that ball. And because he got held back, the least, the most he could do was kick it out of bounds. B clears it. Just one minute to play in the first half here at Bill Armstrong Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana. William McDermott, Ben Holler, and Amanda Foster on the call on Big Ten Plus. Adetokun on a run right at the arms of JT Harms. Well, I, just as I was talking about Edeku not being as aggressive in Ohio State as a team not being as aggressive in the last few minutes, there's a couple of good chances for him there. If they can continue that in the second half, that can be big, but you got to watch those counterattacks. Indiana has so much speed. Wooten. McDonald to Barger. Barger forward with 10 seconds. This will surely end the first half. Indiana has to be happy with where they stand. It was the penalty on Siggy Magnuson. On the penalty, it was his first goal of the season. Indiana, five shots. They've had three corners, though, have been a bit more aggressive. Yeah, it's, it's also, you give got to give a lot of credit to Indiana's back line for not letting them get anything. No corner shot, no corner kicks for uh, Ohio State so far. Really clean defense from Indiana. And really, really no one has stepped up on the attack for Ohio State other than Michael Adetokun. Here's Collins Oduro. And Aduro looks to be shaking up a little bit. Something at his face, maybe? He was holding his face. I don't know if he's, he's bleeding or what it was. They're going to play on. There's an official right there. He's talking to him, but nothing comes of it. Bali to Barger. Two big injuries for Indiana in that first half, Ben. It was Hugo Bacharach who ended up going to the locker room in the first, and Clay Murador as well injured his leg. The sun finally poking through now. First might, time on this Sunday. Might help with a little bit of the heat and the coldness of this one, too. So I wonder if that plays a factor because this is one of the first games for this of the season. This is the turning point where it does get start to get a little bit cold. Not a lot of Indiana players wearing sleeves. You see a few guys on Ohio State with some sleeves and gloves. So corner for Indiana will be the first of this young second half. I'd like to see Indiana execute these a little better. Not only is you know, being able to score on them, but being able to keep a, a possession alive. Server goes quickly. The give and go with Mahalik. And he was leaning to his right, just mishit it. I think he tried to bend a little bit, and it didn't hit the way he wanted off his foot. He tried to get it somewhere near the goal, somewhere someone could get ahead on it. But once again, just not executing on those corners. Indiana's got to improve on that. Yeah. 
So Gumali in for Indiana. It was Carson Henderlong who started up top as one of the two forwards along with Sarver in the first half. Gumbali came in for him maybe about midway through, and that's what Todd Yeager is sticking with. I'm interested to see how aggressive Ohio State's going to be. You saw the first few minutes. They tried to get a lot of balls up to Adeta Kuhn and get in one-on-one -on -one situations. But the problem with those is you have to worry about the counterattack. Sometimes you don't have a lot of men back. And when you're down 1-0, it, it's tough to – be tough to want to do that when you have to worry about conceding another and going down 2 now. But at some point, you do have to score if you want to tie this game up. So there's probably going to be somewhat of a switch that flips. It just depends on when that's going to be. Here's Samways. Has an open lane. Barkovic. Adendakun along with Roberts there in the box. Yeah, this game, we've seen a lot of it played in the Indiana's attacking third, a lot of it played in the middle attack, in the middle third. But we haven't seen a ton in Ohio State's attacking third, especially because when they have opportunities, they're usually quick with them. So there's not a lot of time spent on them. We'll see if that's something that changes. Owen Sullivan, number four, a defender in for Ohio State. A few changes for Brian Masonov and the Buckeyes out of the break. Papers are flying everywhere right now, too, with the wind. I don't know if you have enough hard objects to put on all the papers I that know, you have. I know. I've got water bottles. <laughs> um, binoculars. Binoculars. Here's McDonald to Tommy Mahalik. Mahalik working to his left. A shot saved by Treo. Here's Mahalik again. Gumbali now to Oturo. Oturo slips. And Wooten able to clear it forward for the Buckeyes. Tommy Mahalik had a really good look at that one and put it in a really good spot. Just to, you know, good job by Trejo of getting in front of it. Yeah, just an excellent save by Trejo, the redshirt sophomore from Mexico City. Textbook goalkeeping. Adendo Kuhn almost gets around Miller. He goes down and no penalty. It's a foul on the Dayton transfer and the junior from Nigeria. Oh, well, they're sending it up to him again. It just seems like Indiana's been so good at just having at least two guys back to where you don't get him in too much of a dangerous situation. Once again, Jansen Miller getting position. And that's how you beat that one on with those one-on-one -on -one situations. Andre Roberts, Donnie Williams, number twenty-three, also in defensively for Ohio State to start this half. Two big entries for Indiana, Clay Mirador and Hugo Bacharach. Amanda has more on that. Well, yeah, guys, both Hugo and Clay are questionable to return as of right now. Bacharach came out of the locker room with some sort of sling around his shoulder and right arm, and, and Mirador came out with apparently it didn't look like there was anything really wrapped around his foot anymore, but he was on crutches. The good thing about the Hoosiers is that they have enough depth to not really be worried about these two injuries, at least for the rest of this game, guys. Good point, Amanda, for the rest of this game. But in terms of the season, two guys that Todd Yeagley needs, especially Hugo Bacharach. Yeah, and it's nice to have depth like Amanda was talking about, but two of those guys are, are part of that depth. And, and Herador gets a lot of playing time. Yeah, and, and, well. and providing different looks is a big thing, too. You get you start to get limited in the amount of looks you can give when you have two guys out like that, especially guys who are, are as versatile as those two in Bacharach and Mirador. Both newcomers to this Indiana team, one a freshman, one a transfer. Now Oduro goes down on his knees. Barkovic up ahead to Adendakun, trailing behind him. He has a man. 
Taking him by himself against Mayer, a one deflection. It's Velios number 12 who was in the trail spot, and he's just going to take it out right now. See, those are the opportunities I was talking about. Usually, Ohio State wants to get a position where it's just Mayer versus Adenikum, but Sarver is so good at being everywhere and being playing so fast on both sides of the ball that he's able to keep up with the Dedekum and make sure it's not a one-on-one -on -one opportunity and then has to force Ohio State to kick it back out. Sullivan to Wooten. Pakoda shot to the left of the post. Ohio State shot taken by number 10. That looked like that had enough on it, too. That looked like Carm was maybe just a little bit behind on that one. Ohio State getting their opportunities early in the second half, and you see right here just a nice pass to him in a perfect spot. He had a good look. A lot of these shots from the Buckeyes, though, have come from outside the box. Not a lot yeah. inside the 18. Well, it's because of how aggressive and how good the positioning of guys like Jensen Miller and Joey Mayer have been. And even Brett Beebe, some, some of the fullbacks, Beebe and Barger, have been able to come up. Andre Roberts sliding out of play. Ooh, the foul anyways on Indiana. to Barkovich. The Roberts cross in, Barger got a foot on it. Throw in Buckeyes. Gumbali takes it away from Anthony Samways. And Sullivan a good slide tackle. It ricocheted off Gumbali's foot, it's Buckeyes ball. The best angle on it, but I don't know if that hit off Goombali. It's a really good defensive play from Samway. Samway's another guy who's really everywhere on the attacking and defensive side of the ball. Haven't called his name a lot, but Indiana's played good defense on him. Maybe the first corner of the day for Ohio State. Adendatoon does a good job of getting down to it on the touchline. Joey Mayer was in the vicinity. Taking the corner is and it's going to be ten. Parker Grinstead. Grinstead. Ohio State ranks sixth in the NCAA. Four corners, 7.17 a game. This is the first of the afternoon for Ohio State. But Grinstead to boot it away. High arching, long corner. Avelios, one just goes over the bar on the ricochet. The Ohio State shot was taken by number 12. That's what's been so impressive about Indiana defensively is you talk about that number and being so high in the NCAA and corner kicks. Indiana's held them to just one today. And they've had four themselves. But it's an Ohio State team that relies heavily on, a, on set pieces for their attacking. And Coach Masonov, it's a big part of what this Ohio State team wants to do. There's some confusion, confusion yeah. yeah, for who that went out on. And it's ruled Indiana possession from Alex Beeler, lead referee. Ooh. Sam Ways basically <laughs> sits on the ball. Indiana took a 1-0 lead. In the first half, it was a penalty that led to a Joey Mayer goal. Just eight combined shots, 10 combined shots, excuse me, between the two teams. Ohio State's picked up two this half, one for the Hoosiers. I haven't seemed to worry too much about the counterattack of Indiana. I talked about that may be a reason they're less aggressive, but they have those two shots to start this second half. It's a good sign if you want to see Ohio State score. Sam weighs an elbow to the back of Barger, foul on him. I 
And Yagley visibly frustrated, you know, as all good coaches are. Even when you're winning by a goal or two, they're going to be frustrated. And the, the numbers speak for himself. 700, 700 win percentage on his 14 years here at Indiana. 183, 64, and 51. Yeah, it was a four-time All-American under his dad, Jerry Yagley, at Indiana. Jerry Yagley referred to the godfather here at IU of Indiana men's soccer. Well, he got a field named after him. Jerry Yagley Field here at Armstrong Stadium. But Dendo Kuhn into the box. Barger was there. Roberts gets it stripped away by Oduro. And he'll clear it. Barger was a little frustrated with Oduro right there, saying he should have come up and cleared it a little earlier. Two freshmen going at it. But this year's big for Yegley, too. He has not missed an NCAA tourney since being here as head coach of Indiana University. So a big record on the line, a big streak on the line, I should say. He had the national title in 2012. He came over after one year as the head coach at Wisconsin back in 2009. Adenda Kuhn in and harms an aggressive play. Barkovich didn't have a chance at it. Yeah, that might have been dangerous if that one gets past Harms. Really smart play and really good awareness of Harms for noticing what's around him, noticing the situation. Okay, the ball's coming in, and Markovic has good position on my other side, so I better come up and get this ball. Really smart, high IQ play from JT Harms. Ohio State has been in the attacking third and had some of the time of possession this half, just 15 minutes in. You mentioned their come from behind tie against Louisville. They were down 2 0, scored two goals in the second half. In that game earlier this week. And that's a game where Masonic, Masonic told basically was just said that might have been their worst performance of the year, just in terms mm -hmm. of how they looked. They said it was sloppy all around. And. We got lucky to get those last two goals in the last 10 minutes. Sarver one-on-one -on -one with Sullivan. And Sullivan a slide tackle, all ball. He's able to stop the advantage. McDonald a nutmeg and a check from Wooten. No whistle. More physical play as Adenakun drags Jack Wagoner to the ground, free kick IU. It's aggressive, but I think all of this is, is somewhat clean in terms of as clean as aggressiveness can be. Just both teams going after the ball, and both teams have with some really fast players that, you know, contact looks a little more extreme right. when both guys are, are more speedy. You mentioned the physicality of this game. 18 combined fouls, and of course the injuries for the Hoosiers in Bacharach and Murador. Another Hoosier goes down and another foul on the Buckeyes. That's Tommy Mahalik being helped up by Parker Grinstead. Brett Beebe will take the free kick in front of the crab band in the Hoosier Army. Wagoner to the speedy Sarver. for a goal kick. The reason this Indiana team has been so good for so long, and, and we'll talk about this in a minute, but, but being able to host a lot of, uh, being a national seed and being able to host a lot of tournament games is just because it's a cliche to say this for a lot of good teams, but it really is true for Indiana. They're not a team that re- Builds, they reload. They're so much. They're so good at getting so much talent, so many recruits, and so many guys that stick around for in, with Indiana for a while, that they're able to keep consistency 
But it's a long, not only a str long streak of, of making the tournament, there's also a pretty long streak of hosting a tournament game that also could be at, at risk this season with how they've played. Pakoda is back in. Andre Roberts is out for the Buckeyes. Yeah, you said it, Ben. Indiana good at reloading, and now with the transfer portal, guys like JT Harms and Carson Henderlong can be Hoosiers and play right away, even with that COVID year. Mm -hmm. Jensen Miller and Carson Henderlong both came, coming from the same college. It's Xavier a couple of years ago. That's a good team. One of the teams Ohio State drew with the last few games. Three straight draws. Michigan, Xavier, and Louisville in those last three matches. 56 degrees and mostly cloudy in Bloomington. Wind gusts up to 11 miles an hour here at Bill Armstrong Stadium. Jansen Miller has been excellent for Indiana today. Like you said, didn't really have a starting role in his time in Indiana after transferring from Xavier. But this year has really stepped up and the senior has proved to be reliable along with Mayer on that back line. Not only did he not really have a starting role, he didn't have much of a role at all. There were a lot of games where he didn't, even, where he didn't get any playing time. But it's because that back line was so solid last year that they didn't, they didn't sub a lot on Absolutely. the back. Forward ball is gonna result in a goal kick for harms. Yeah, Miller was a top 40 player in the nation out of high school. He went to Xavier, who started there for a few years, transferred to Indiana. Good defense there by Indiana. They almost let Dakota slip on the outside and didn't see him. That's the problem when you have too many guys going after the ball. Sometimes something happens at the back where you can't see. 20 minutes into this second half, Ohio State is starting to take control of possession. Indiana still holding on 1-0 at their penalty goal. In the first half, William McDermott alongside Ben Holler, Amanda Foster field side for us on Big Ten Plus. We talked about earlier, Indiana is a team that even if they do have the lead, they still like to stay aggressive, but still not going to be terribly upset by not controlling time of possession because of how solid the defense has been. Valio shot, a goal! Off the ricochet, Ohio State ties it up at one apiece. They were knocking on the door. They kept getting more and more chances. It and was Indiana, Joey Mayer. Yeah, a lot of Hoosiers were there. Mayer was able to get his foot on it, but sometimes that can change the trajectory of the ball and that can, and can mess up arms a little bit. Well, that is a killer for Indiana and Joey Mayer, who's been so solid all year and was in the right place. Just couldn't get it enough. So just like that, Ohio State in the second half. The goal was unassisted his first of the season. Ties it up. A huge goal from Velios, his first of the season. We got a 1 1 score, and both goals for each team have been first of seasons for Mayer and. Bellios respectively. Guru shaking up a little bit. He plays so aggressive and it feels like there's a lot of times he gets fouled like that because of he's just how he's everywhere on the field. You know, Duro takes the contact. A free kick opportunity for Indiana. So 
Durrell, just a freshman, has started nearly every game this season. And you can hear Mazenov saying, back off a little bit. You can let them shoot from there. And they like that positioning that McDonald's going to take. Contact in the box. It was Miller and Wooten. Miller fell to the ground. I think it's just going to be a talk between these two. It's been an aggressive game, and Miller is one of the most aggressive players that you have on this Indiana team. And Wooten, he can play aggressive as well. Alex Wheeler, lead referee, telling them to rein it in. Patrick McDonald, the midfielder from Greensboro, will take the free kick for Indiana. McDonald in the box, Goombali on the back end. Couldn't get there and off the foot of Joey Marin out of play, Ohio State possession. Once again, set pieces have not been kind to Indiana and it's not the expectation that you're gonna score on every set piece, but at least that you're gonna have a, a somewhat of a long possession and be able to have a couple of opportunities they didn't there. They didn't get anything close to the box really. Just as we were talking about, the, the play hasn't really been played a lot in the Ohio State attacking third. And still to this point, even with that goal, it really hasn't. It was once again those short opportunities where Ohio State pushes it up and doesn't spend a lot of time in their attacking third, but is so quick on the on the opportunities that they get. And they're finally able to punch one in. Yeah, it was a goal from Dalen Velios just a few minutes ago. Ohio State threatening again. Samways to Durbin. Really good Keeps job it by, in field. Yeah, really good job by Durbin keeping that in. Good hustle, smart play. So Carson Henderlong will enter. He started the match up top. And now him and Goombali will be on the field for the first time. Mahalik is sent off. Enderlong has scored two goals in the last three games for Indiana. Velios, the score for Ohio State here in the second half. His first goal of the year. Velios coming in only had shot the ball four times. And it was those shots out of the box that Ohio State had been getting looks at that one. Just a great look. Senior from Vancouver. Another corner for Ohio State. Aggressive play by Velios again. Yeah, Velios has been one of those guys who's been in college for a while, and he's had some up and down seasons. So go all the way back to 2021 in his sophomore season. He was named a player to Big Ten play to watch before the season. Now, that was the only season he gets it. Had somewhat of a slower sophomore season that year. Junior last year got the little improvement, and then this year he's finally stepping up to be the player he should. Grinstead will take the corner for Ohio State, their second of the day, and this one untouched. Barger will throw in. Oh, 
This matchup was going to be interesting, too, because of how good Indiana has been at home this year and how bad Ohio State has been on the road this year. And Ohio State coming into this game, only 1-4-0 one four, one four on the season this year on the road, only a one win. It was Barker and Oduro who were tangled up. Ohio State goes quickly after the foul. Indiana coming into the game, a record of five, three, and four. Ohio State, three, four, and five. Samways in the box. Wooten. Durbin now. Barger defending. The cross, a good look. Off the leg of Pakoda and Oduro. Soaring up in the air over Anthony Samways called for a foul. Yeah, that's just Duro being a little over aggressive and not being conscious of where he is or the situation. This is going to set up for a really good spot for Ohio State. These are the opportunities Ohio State just wasn't getting in the first half, but they're being more aggressive now and they're finding ways to slip Indiana's defense. And they're finding ways if you can force somebody like Duro to be a little over aggressive, then you can have a good spot here. 21 total fouls right now. Ohio State slight advantage. Well, or in the <laughs> slight advantage with 10. And Ohio State's 11. So Dedekun and Grinstead set up for the free kick. Dedekun takes it. He was going for a goal off the chest of Sarver. He was trying to catch Indiana off guard. Not a bad alternative. You, you get a corner out of it. And Ohio State, who is so good at getting those throughout the season, but hasn't had a ton today. Under 17 and a half to play in Bloomington, Indiana. Grinstead. Sullivan got ahead on it. It'll be a goal kick for Indiana. He also goes down. Not sure what happened there. No, that's that actually Tomaso Villa. They're going to stop play for this, too. At least they did initially. Yeah, the clock is stopped. I don't know if we're going to see an Ohio State sub. I don't think so. I think they're just going to let them reset things and let Indiana get that goal kick out. 17-12 to go. Dakota is really active in the first half. Here's Dalen Velios who had the goal for the Buckeyes. Via crossing field. Another heavy contact. Header from Oduro, Ohio State coaching staff wanted a foul. Yeah, one call zero went too high that time. He didn't want to be too aggressive, so he stayed on the ground, but then he went over him and kind of fell on him. That one I don't think is a foul, but you can see Mays and I was a little frustrated. Thought there should have been a foul there. Here's Brett Beebe, Indiana, on a fast break opportunity. We'll slow it down. Ohio State has been in control of this second half. Indiana trying to regain their footing. Boxing out Adenda Kuhn. And Adenda Kuhn a bit too aggressive with the contact called for the foul. I'm going to see that a lot more now. Ref's going to be a little more, a little less lenient with some of the contact. I know there's a lot of, frustrated boil, a lot of frustration boiling over. Both teams trying to remain aggressive here with 15 to play. Sub for 
Mazanoff and Ohio State. And Sam weighs out Roberts back in. Andre Roberts was another big piece of that late scoring attack against Louisville just a game ago. He had the other goal in the 82nd before Wooten's game time goal. Mahalik takes a spill there. Maduro out. Mahalik less playing time today than normal. He's been subbed out a couple of times. Finally comes back in. Had that really good shot on goal. A good save. Trejo, that was early yeah. in the second half. A chance for Indiana to go up 2-0. Andrew Long alone up top. Here's Mahalik in the box. That shot's blocked by Sullivan. McDonald a shot that's blocked by Grinstead. Throwing for McDonald. We have not seen Mirador or Bacharach since they exited with injuries. McDonald the throw into the box. Mayer gets ahead on it, but it's cleared by Wooten and Roberts. Really good job by Ohio State clearing and good, doing a good job working as a team coming off with somewhat of a rotation. Once it got towards the top of the box there. Donnie Williams in at defense this half. Clears that one for Barker and Indiana retain possession. Here's Sarver, through ball to Kambali. May have gotten deflected by Villa. Ben, if you're Indiana here, lost the lead this half, and 12 minutes to go. What? can they do to try to put this one back in the win column? Well, it starts by winning the ball in the middle third. That's what Ohio State's been doing so well in the second half, is just possession has been all Buckeyes. And that's something that Indiana didn't really have to worry about in the first half. But Ohio State was more aggressive, but Indiana didn't have an answer. But Durbin's on sides here. And no, that, no, they call yeah. offsides. It was close there for a second. Looks like the right call from the official. Looked like just a step on him. A lot of contact as Sarver goes down. Both these teams really need a win to kickstart some of that tournament resume. You know, those resumes are going to be a big topic of discussion coming up just a couple of weeks before we reach conference tournament time. As the wind is really picking up towards the latter half of this game. I think we might blow away. Well, if we don't talk for an extended period of time. Send for know. us. Yes. Would be a foul on the wind. Only one foul on the wind. 14 on Ohio State, 10 on Indiana. Barker into the box, and Miller was able to get it up in the air, but Trejo, an aggressive keeper position. It clears it rather quickly. Grinstead up to a dedicoon. He was offside, he's not gonna touch it. Here's Wooten, a bad pass intercepted by McDonald. Back kick to Sarver. Sarver checked by Via foul. Yeah, that could have been one of McDonald. A lot of Indiana fans wanted one too, but that's what Ohio State's gonna have to do to catch up and get more numbers. It isn't a terrible foul. Ender Long, bodied by Williams. Hey, 
McDonald will throw in. McDonald scored against Evansville on Wednesday. Short throw in a little bit low. It was Grinstead who touched it for the Buckeyes. Now they're on a break of their own. Wooten whistled for being offside. That wasn't really close either, but that was a really good ball from Roberts if it did with his chest too. Unfortunately, Ohio State just a few steps ahead, but Indiana's defense has to, has to give better getting back. Fast breaks after the reset have been critical for both teams. That's how Indiana scored their first goal. And that's what happens when you don't get a lot of time possession on those resets like Indiana. Mahalik, a bad touch. Barger, the freshman. And there's a miscommunication between Barger and Mahalik on who's going to take that ball. Burns had just lost it. And eventually, a whistle blown for a foul. And Mazenow was frustrated on the sideline, too. He thought that should have been a foul on Indiana earlier. And one of those call it both ways kind of moments for Mazenow. McDonald goes quickly. Sarver, low angle, and a goal from Carson Henderlong. His third in three games, Indiana leads 2-1. I'm not sure who it was in the middle of the box, who that ball could have gone to, but let it go. You saw the ball in the middle. Goombali lets that one go by him, knows there's someone behind him. Perfect teamwork, perfect connection from Indiana. They're in form. They have been for the last few games, and that is a huge goal. They just got to play defense for the last eight minutes. And it Mazenov, was, the frustration's boiling over with the officials. It was Henderlong who had the positioning on Donnie Williams, the sophomore defender. And that low angled pass from Sarver results in the third goal of the match, second for Indiana, and a big one in the 82nd minute. Talked about how hot Henderlong has been. It's his third in three games. The transfer from Xavier came back for his fifth year, really wanted to be a part of this Indiana team, wanted to be a part of a championship team. He's been another guy who has been kind of a, a brand or a big name guy for a while. He was a preseason top 100 top drawer player a couple seasons ago. Well, here's Ohio State and Braden Durbin. Velios, he scored earlier, a chance for the Buckeyes. Wooten, Roberts blocked by Barger. Really good defensive play by Barger. Roberts may have had another option, maybe a smarter option there than trying to take a shot. Roberts out for a goal kick. Another good job of Indiana's back line. Joey Mayer being a couple places at once, getting a couple different defenders. That's what ha happens when you don't spread out in the attack. So 2 1 Indiana, under 10 to play here at Bill Armstrong Stadium. Indiana, a team that has started slow in September of the past few years, but a team that always seems to find their footing by November and by postseason play, and, and specifically in the Big Ten. A Dedekun out, but it will be a corner for Ohio State in October. Indiana this season 2-0-1. Last year they were 4-1-4. How about 2021? 7-2-0.
Well, keep in mind, people forget that la just last year was when the, the rule came in that there will be no regular season overtime. So that's why you see a lot more draws in the last couple of years. Grimstead had a good chance, but over the crossbar. Iowa State reeling for a goal to notch it back up at two apiece. And you're going to see Indiana be, get a little more defensive now. Being up one, not being up by one with 45 minutes to go is a little different than being up by one with five minutes to go. So they're going to drop back a little bit. Sullivan chased by Mahalik. It's ruled a goal kick. 2-1 Indiana, 5-25 to go at Jerry Yeagley Field in Bloomington, Indiana. But a game of swings. Indiana was in full control of the first 45, had a goal off the penalty. Ohio State responded in the second half. Dalen Velios, a goal of his own. How about that play from Alex Barger? He gets dragged down by Grimstead. That's just Barger, the freshman, winning the ball over Grimstead, and Grimstead couldn't do anything about it. Got frustrated there at the end. Beautiful defense by Barger, and then good positioning there at the end, holding up. Frustration from Grimstead and Mazanov on the sideline. Alex but Barger. No question about that foul. Another stop clock, might get. Not sure. Alex Barker, a guy that Todd Yeagley has put a lot of trust in in his freshman year. And they're going to give a yellow card. card on the bench here to Ohio State. I don't know if it was Mazenov. It looked like there were some assistant coaches who were getting a little more frustrated than Mazenov was. And, and, and it looked like they pointed at somebody on the sideline that's sitting down. So that might be an assistant coach. Of course, they'll just call it a sideline yellow card. That's what it looks like it is. And then Mazenov getting the explanation. There's no question about that last foul. I mean, maybe you think Barger should have been called for one could be the argument. I didn't see it. But. Here it is again. No, nothing, nothing to definitely draw a foul. Definitely a foul and then on Grimstead. Definitely Grimstead brings him down. Just a boil over of things. Right before Indiana scored that that last goal, the Mazenov thought there should have been a foul earlier. That would have given Ohio State the ball. So a yellow card to the bench of the Buckeyes. Mahalik taking it to the near side corner. That's going to be a corner for Indiana. Sullivan got a foot on it and put it out of play. Not a ton of students because of fall break in the weather, but still a really good show out from, from the rest of the fans here, knowing how big this game is and how big playoff or postseason implications there are in this game. Man, it's a soccer doubleheader. That Bill Armstrong saying women's team plays at 3 o'clock right after this one. Right here on Big Ten Plus, too. That's the Wolverines, big rival of those, these Buckeyes. Under four to play. Chances dwindling for Ohio State. We've seen Indiana, this happened to them a couple times where they concede, the last season a couple times where they concede in the last four or five minutes, especially in Big Ten play. It happened against Maryland. Roberts in the box. Barger clears it. So finishing games is kind of at a point of emphasis defensively. That's a handball. That's going to give Indiana a free kick. And McDonald booted it away. Handball, Indiana. They're going to stop, they're going to stop yeah, the they, clock. So they stop the clock. So it works out to hurt him because if he just let it go, some clock would tick. Now nothing's going to tick until they get the ball off because of him booting that ball away. You have a good point there, Ben. This is kind of a dead-eye shot for Wooten. 35 yards out. And this is who you want taking it if you're Ohio State, too. Ball placement's been one of his best qualities this season. Eight red shirts around the 18. 
He goes far side. And that one just headed out of play by Sullivan. And behind the net, goal kick IU. That one just a little too strong. Talk about the eight red shirts just might not have been in the right spot. Carson Henderlong gave Indiana the advantage just six minutes ago. Henderlong is third goal in three matches. Velios in the box and over the crossbar from Braden Durbin. Under two minutes to play in Bloomington, Indiana. IU the advantage. Ohio State's had a lot of those today, just shots outside of the box trying to find something. Of course, in a situation like this, it's a little different. You, you have a more of a sense of urgency. Now, keep in mind, Ohio State did tie it, but, but Ohio, or Indiana didn't score too terribly long after. So Ohio State has been playing down for much of this game. That's the biggest thing in soccer is you play differently depending on the score. Arms just clearing these balls forward. It's been Henderlong up there, along with Sarver trying to just maintain possession. Donnie Williams tackled by Henderlong. And Henderlong injured on the play along with Williams. Clock will stop with 107 remaining. A tough tackle. Yeah. They're definitely a foul. Andrew Goldsworthy, the redshirt senior defenseman, in for IU. Big clear right into the arms of JT Harms. And with one minute left, Indiana in control. They bring that extra defenseman in because they're going to be less aggressive, especially with one minute to go. And it's a smart move by Egley. Does it pretty much every time they're up by at least one goal with a minute left. Thirty seconds now for Ohio State. Aden Nakun forward and Miller just skies it high. It's a really good deflection too. Gumbali gets it out of the way. Ten now for Ohio State. Sullivan forward. Last chance for the Buckeyes and BB ends the game. Two one. Indiana the victors, a much needed win for the Big Ten standings.